Who are the, uh, who would you say are your five best Buffalo Bills you've played with? Is this Tear Talk? No, I'm just asking. Five like best it. Buffalo Bills I played tier with. Tear Talk, I think, is about beer. Oh, is it? Yeah. Kyle Williams won. God, what a stud. I know. Yeah. He's rolling he ball in, of butcher knives. If he, was in a, if he was in a bigger market, he would be J.J. Watt and all that. Yeah. You know. Mm. But, He'd be uh, better than J.J. Watt because he's awesome. Right. You said it. I agree. <laughs> said, you I said agree. it. No, I agree hey, 100%. Uh, did you see J.J.'s tweet today? I just retweeted it. This man's always trying to steal my shit. I can't believe he's been reading your tweets like that. That's crazy. J.J.'s on my ass. Yeah. Dude, he... Uh, J.J. rubbed me wrong one time because Fitz had to leave a golf game out in Arizona to go film something with Zach Brown and J.J. Watt, and they cut Fitz out of it when we went to the concert that night, and I was, like, down front, really drunk, like, F you guys, like... Yeah. Like, That's hilarious. Probably because J.J. told him to. Yeah, Definitely. well, so why, did, why, did, why would J.J. rub you wrong in that scenario? I thought he had something to do with it. Yeah, he probably did. But J.J.'s just <laughs> such a Yo. me guy. He's such a me guy. Yeah. I think I might have heard about you guys talking about it on the podcast before, but, like, you could tell he's such a me guy because they can't even run blitzes in Houston because they got to let him do whatever he wants. And then all the linebackers got to play off of him. Like, like we would go in and gash Houston. Like he might have mm. three tackles for loss and we'd have 170 rush yards. Yeah. It's Cause like he's blowing like three gaps at a time. He doesn't, he doesn't play real defense. Nope. And if, and if like you can send a guy back to cut him, well, he'll jump way out of the way. Mm. And so now he's completely out of the way. Now you're running inside zone and there's like literally just a gaping hole on the backside because he jumped out of the way. No, no I don't, I, I haven't liked him from the second devil's game. advocate. He's a phenomenal, he's he phenomenal football player. Great, player. great player. Don't like him. Great. I like great great better than great him. At bleeding and taking his helmet off for sure. Was that? Yeah. Did I tell you who the he real hero was of uh, that Houston defense was um, Cushing. Yeah, the real stud. hero, stud. Yeah, he is man's man. Dude, he had, he did a pod with uh, on Brian Peters' podcast. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's like one of those dudes. You're just like, hey, yeah, this is a fucking boy. You I, know what I'm saying? We uh, he came on a visit to Louisville, and uh, we got him. I don't I don't know that he drank a whole lot in high school, but he drank on his Louisville visit, and he turned up. I oh, love yeah, that. he's a New Jersey cat. I yeah. mean, those dudes are fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, he's a DeFranco boy. He's like a, yeah. Joe DeFranco's like a trainer, a well-known trainer out in the Northeast. That's against Cleveland. Fitz did a Photoshop. He, he ran in that dude's face without a helmet on. Fitz did a Photoshop of his face on Cushing's body, but it's mm. like a perfect Photoshop. It's yeah. Awesome. That's, it is hilarious. Yeah, Cushing, or, uh, uh, Fitz really liked that. That's hilarious. Hey, so yeah. Kyle, uh, Kyle Williams. Kyle Williams. I mean, I played one year with T.O. He's a Hall of Famer. Mm. Shady was a stud. Shady stud. Um, smart dude. Witty he didn't cat. give a fuck about Pro Bowls or nothing, huh? Richie was telling me that he made the Pro Bowl, and he's like, congrats, in the locker room. She'd be like, man, I don't give a fuck about that. Just kind of like, like doesn't wants, give a shit. Shady wants to win games, and and he wants to show out on Sundays. Yeah. And, like, he he's so smart, it's unbelievable. Like, he could sit there on his phone in meetings. He knows everything going on. He'll never mess something up. And... One time I, like, I built a lot of trust with Shady when I did this, and we've stayed close buddies, but he uh, he was on his phone one day. Well, one of the coaches said something to one of the running backs, and he was like, well, I thought we could, and, like, pointed over at Shady. Oh, and shit. I was like, shut your mouth, rookie. Like, that dude's been in the league. That dude will be a Hall of Famer, potentially. Like, mm -hmm. you've done nothing for us. I was like, I just went off on you him. went off yeah. on him. Oh, Good yeah. for you. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Shady yeah. was on his phone though, in a meeting. That's, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy, yeah. bro. Yeah. He, he was like that. Trip, it was incredible. It's always, it was always incredible, too. Um, <sighs> bless you. Thank you. Um, man, it's hard to say. Because, you know, he wins two Super Bowls at the end of his career, but he wasn't active for either of the Super Bowls. It'll be close. It'll be a really close call. But Shady was an absolute stud. It was stud. incredible. Um, I could just carry the ball like that and never fumble. I know. Well, he... he Carried it the like he was like you know how you know how all the coaches are like oh he's a fumbler so they're showing tape but if they haven't fumbled like shady and they carry he's a fumbler he just doesn't know it yet and he's just carrying it out to the side he does. that man never fumbled he, he holds it like who was the dude in uh longest yard Nelly yeah he holds that like least Nelly least amount, of, least amount of fumbles per carry over the ten year stretch he played that's about that. crazy that is crazy up to a certain amount of carries or whatever but um look at that ball Williams, look at that fucking ball Lashawn McCoy Fred Jackson Fred Jackson might Fred be Jackson. I mean, Fred Jackson's one of my favorite teammates of all time. Just really? absolute stud. Um, shoot, who would be the last one? Um, who did I play with towards the end? Like Tredavious White. He was a rookie my last year. Absolute stud. stud. Yeah. Uh, him. Yeah, he's a monster. Probably leaving somebody out. Richie. I mean, Richie 
really, really good player. Yeah. You know. Which he's on, which he's on. That's you play it. with, uh, what's his name? Is it Lee Smith? Lee Smith. Love that dude. Dude, I know, you guys, Lee, yes, I know you guys some stories about Lee Smith. We. Who doesn't? Anytime I go to a locker room, they play yeah, with Lee me, Smith. Lee Smith has got some I don't know, even know who Lee Smith I'm is. Lee, but I'm Lee, Lee Smith, just like old school throwback tight end. He's, from, he's, he's in Tennessee, right? Yeah, he's in Knoxville. Dude, we he, love um, that one. I'm telling you, I've heard he's got. Dude, he, had, he played last year for the Falcons. Here's how loved Lee is. Like last year was going to be Lee's last game. So we do a dinner before the Falcons Bills game last year, night before the game. It's like a private little deal with this Italian spot up in Buffalo. Your Italian spot? My second Italian spot. I got you. Not too loyal. How's the family doing? Uh-huh. But, uh, but, how's, your, uh, how's your mother? Yeah. Arthur Smith shows up, their GM, uh, Smith, both okay. starting quarterbacks. Legend, legendary head coach. Oh, he's awesome. Uh, Kyle Pitts, Beasley, Knox. I mean, literally, it was like a, a, a Pro Bowl and coaching staff like meeting at this Italian spot the night before the game, all for Lee. And it was just like the coolest environment, you know, like for That's me, awesome. I, I had one of my buddies with me from Louisville uh, who was in town for the game last year and we left and I was like, man, that night was good for my soul. Like just to be around like a bunch of dudes talking ball and like knowing, you know, like a bunch of dudes from both teams just talking ball the night before the game. I was like, man, I missed that crap. But yeah. but Lee is a, an animal. But we we found out early on that like we're cut a little too much from the same cloth. Like we mm-hmm. both have that like go gene and we had one really late night together, and the next day, we this was during the spring. We we're like, I don't think we can hang out that often, bud. Like, yeah, oh, like, really? Yeah, we're like super close still to this day. Um, but uh, I was like, man, we got to be really careful, like, because we both have that, like, so I, I think, I think both of, I think everyone knows about this in both of our households. We get really drunk one night. Lee spends the night at my house. I wake up in the morning, I can't find my phone, and like, I don't care how drunk I get. Like, I'm going to plug my phone in next to the bed and go to sleep. Yeah. Wake up. It's not there. I'm like, where the hell's my phone? I'm looking all over for it. I look under my bed and it's like in the middle of the frame. Well, I have to like move the whole bed frame. It's not like you can just lift it up. As soon as, so it was dead. As soon as I plug it in, my mom's calling. It's like 930 in the morning. I was like, what the hell is going on? My mom's calling. She goes, are you okay? And I go, yeah. Why? He goes, Lee Smith. She goes, Lee Smith called me at four o'clock in the morning to tell me that you guys got overserved, but everyone's okay. And, oh and my, my, my mom stays up all night just dialing me over and over and over. And he said he he has his wife saying in his phone is like mama. So yeah. He thought he was calling Leslie. I was like, well, why the hell would you call Leslie? Yeah. Like, yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. You're oh my gosh. Fool. Yeah. 